If you were looking for a stereo receiver in 1976 and had $320 to spend on one, you could have purchased this Harman Kardon 430 twin powered receiver. Now $320 would be about $1,760 in 2024. And for that amount of money, you got a receiver that was rated at 25 watts per channel into 8 ohms at not more than 0.3% THD from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz with a frequency response over that same range of plus or minus a half a dB. Harman Kardon's use of the twin power designation basically meant that this was a dual mono type of power amplifier so it had a separate power supply for each channel. We'll take a look at the front and the back pop the covers off, see what's going on there. And then of course there will be data showing how it performed to the specifications that it had back then. And then of course I'll tell you what I thought after listening to it. Here's a close-up view of the Harman Kardon 430 receiver. Pretty much your basic receiver. It has a better look than this picture shows. It uh, needs a little bit of cleaning, but it does have a very nice appearance to it. You have your on-off button here, quarter-inch headphone jack here. You can turn one or both of the speakers on or off. You have a high filter here, low filter here, tape monitor switch, mono switch, FM muting switch, and this contour switch boosts the bass as long as the volume control isn't past the 12 o'clock position. And once it is, then you don't get any more bass boost. And there is no treble boost. It's simply a bass boost effect. Speaking of bass, bass control, treble control, balance control, obviously volume control. And then you have your function selectors for AM, FM, FM stereo, phono, and one auxiliary input. And of course, here's our tuning knob. This is obviously the rear of the HK430, pretty much your standard uh, stuff going on here, a switched outlet, unswitched outlet, AM and FM antenna connections, AM antenna rod, speaker fuses, a normal line fuse and then you have your different uh, speaker connectors and they're the kind where you push in and stick the wire in. This does have an adjustable FM muting for when you switch the muting on up front, phono ground plug and then your input connections are all here. Once you have the cover off of the HK430 you can see that it has two power supplies here and here and then the associated capacitors and fuses. Each of the output stages, which would be uh, here and here and here and here, are, would be driven by one of these power supplies and then your driver uh, board is here. And I'm pretty sure that each channel uses one of these power supplies for these driver boards. And this is a bottom view of the HK430. We have more fuses here and you can kind of just see how things are interconnected and what it would be like to work on it. It looks like it would be fairly easy to work on the majority of the kind of stuff that you would need to should this require repairs. Here is our standard THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz with the HK430 putting out pretty close to 5 watts into 8 ohm loads. The gain has been adjusted for about 25 dB. You can see the THD looks fairly decent at better than, we'll say, 0.06%. SNRs are above 74 dB, and the THD plus noise is minus 64 to minus 68 dB. Here we have the HK430 putting out 5 watts into 4 ohm loads this time. And if you compare this to the 8 ohm data at 5 watts, at 1 kilohertz as well. You'll see that the SNRs are a little worse, which is kind of expected. The THDs are slightly worse, but not substantially. The THD plus noise is a little worse. Here we have the HK430 putting out about 25 watts into 8 ohms, depending on the channel. The specification is that at that power level into 8 ohm loads, we should be better than 0.3% THD, and we are meeting that requirement. We're at about 0.07% for the left channel, and the right channel is about 
0.13% will say. I have also have the volume control set to give us 25 dB of gain and I am using the auxiliary input. The SNRs show a difference between the two channels of oh almost 15 dB. The right channel is noisier and you can kind of see that down here. Uh, its noise level is higher and its harmonics are higher so that is why it's not doing as well as far as the THD plus noise compared to the left channel. Here we have the performance into 4 ohm loads. In this case we are putting out about 31 watts or so at 1 kilohertz. And the HK930 unfortunately has no specs for 4 ohm load performance. You can see we are a bit over the 0.3% THD that we do have in 8 ohm loads and we are not too bad for the left channel. You can also see we are about 26 dB worse in SNR for the right channel here in red and you can just see that visually that it has got some issues. I do know from prior playing around with the unit and scoping the input into the power amp section that uh, this noise is caused by the power amp section. Maybe it is a, a leaky transistor a noisy transistor. I did check all the electrolytic capacitors and they seem just fine. So it does have some noise that comes and goes. Uh, we'll see how it sounds when it's being listened to. But my guess is that I'm not going to be approaching the level where this starts coming in at here at 31 watts. So it's probably not anything that one would hear. Here is our frequency response from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz with the HK430 putting out pretty close to 5 watts into 8 ohm loads. The specification is that it should be plus or minus half a dB over that range and indeed it is. It actually looks fairly decent. I should point out that I did adjust the bass and treble controls to try to get the response as flat as I could. The channels are balanced to within about 2 tenths of a dB. Here is the frequency response of the HK430 with it putting out 5 watts into 4 ohm loads and if you compare it with the 5 watt into 8 ohm load case it is just slightly worse here at the high end of the band maybe a tenth or two of a dB but for the most part it looks identical. Here is a plot showing the HK430's output impedance from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. This translates to a damping factor of about 27 if I use the value at 1 kilohertz. At least for the left channel it would be probably closer to 30 for the right channel. And the spec is that the damping factor should be 40 or greater. So it is not too far off. Here is the HK430's THD versus frequency for a couple different output power levels and that would be into 8 ohms from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Keeping in mind that the specification is the THD should be better than 0.3 percent which would be up here. We are definitely meeting that requirement throughout the frequency range and the different power levels. Minus 2.5 would be the equivalent of about 23 watts and minus 14.5 would be about 1.5 watts. With the HK430 putting out 25 watts into 8 ohms, you can see that the even or second harmonic are higher than the third or odd harmonic, at least for the first two, and then it kind of alternates depending on uh, which higher level harmonic you are looking at. Here is the HK430's multitone response, and this would be into 8 ohm loads. The Distortion free range would be between say 10 to 12 bits depending on the channel and the frequency. Here is a plot showing the crosstalk of the HK430 with the active channel putting out 5 watts into 8 ohm loads. There is no specification for the crosstalk but it is anywhere from about oh, we will say 56 dB to 47 dB overall. That is not uh, too bad for something this old. And I am using the auxiliary input for all the measurements so far. Here is a plot showing the IMD response with 19 and 20 kilohertz tones injected such that we are putting out about 5 watts into 8 ohm loads. Our volume control is still set to give us 25 dB of gain. And 
the specification is that at full rated power, the IMD should be better than 0.15%. And I'm pretty sure it would if I ran this uh, into my Excel uh, calculator, it would probably show the IMD much less than 0.015%. Right now we're looking at the frequency response from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz with the HK430 putting out about 5 watts into 8 ohm loads and what I'm going to do is put on some of the different filters and we'll see what happens here in real time. So the first one I'm going to do is the one called contour and you can see that it's boosting up the low frequency part of the band about 5 dB and for the purposes of this I'm just showing the left channel. Now that we're flat we're going to go ahead and flip in the high cut filter and you can see that at 20 kilohertz it's killed the high end by about 16 dB. I'm going to go ahead and switch it out and now I'm going to put in the low cut filter and the low cut filter is putting in about oh, 15 dB at 20 hertz. This plot shows the system noise. In this case I have terminated the auxiliary inputs into shorts and we're just looking at the hum and noise and there is a specification that it should be better than 65 dB down and we are meeting that requirement I'd say pretty close. As they typically do with receivers that have phono inputs or preamplifiers or integrated amplifiers that have phono inputs, we are measuring the THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz of the phono input to the tape monitor output. And this is with a 5 millivolt signal applied. You can see the gain of the phono section is about, oh, we'll say 33, 34 dB. Now, if you look at this marker here at zero, that's showing that you're 39 dB down from our one kilohertz signal at 60 hertz, and then at 180 hertz, you're only down another four dB. So this is not what you want. You want those to be way down as far as you can. Most likely you would hear this in your uh, phonograph when you're playing it back, uh, some hum there. And this is kind of just showing what it looks like. Here is the HK430's phono frequency response. And this is measured from the phono input to the tape monitor output with a 5 millivolt signal applied. There is no specification for the phono frequency response. But as you can see, depending on the channel, we're down maybe a dB to up about 1.8 dB. And this is from... 20 kilohertz to 20 hertz. With the RIAA weighting applied, so ideally you would want a flat line going across zero here. Right now we're looking at the rise time of the HK430 with a 1 kilohertz square wave going in, and that is our pulse right here in purple. And the specification for rise time is that it should be less than 3 microseconds, and we are measured at 2.4 or 2.6. I was measuring it by hand here. So it does meet that requirement. And I should point out that I did have to invert the waveforms because between the input and output, there is a 180 degree phase shift, which you will see shortly. Speaking of phase shift, this is what we're seeing right here. We have our input waveform here, and then we have the output waveform here. And this is for the auxiliary input. So we do see 180 degrees of phase shift. When I do the next uh, measurements for phase, the yellow channel, the output is inverted so that we can actually see the, the phase aside from the 180 degrees. So this first phase shift, this is at one kilohertz and it's showing that there really is no difference in phase between the input and output. And for this case, I've been measuring the phase of the right channel. At 10 kilohertz, we do have a little bit of phase difference between the input and output for the right channel. I'm guessing this is less than 10 degrees of phase shift. And at 100 hertz, we see no difference in phase between the input and output other than the initial 180 degree phase shift. And this shows the difference in phase between the left and right channels. There is no uh, 
inverting the phase for the measurement needed for that. And we're seeing there is no difference in phase at one kilohertz between the left and right channels as they are terminated into 8 ohm loads. I forgot to mention that the HK430 weighs in at about 24 pounds. From what we saw of the tour, as best I can tell, it is all original and it's all working with the exception of the tuner uh, dial indicator. There's a lamp in there that's burned out and that would be a real nightmare to place and it's uh, not really critical to its functioning. But other than that, it's in great shape. I did check the biases for the output transistors for both channels and they were uh, right where they were supposed to be and I did clean and lube the pots before I started my testing. Now the right channel as you saw has a little bit of noise that comes and goes but in my listening tests which I'll talk about in just a little bit there was no problem with that noise. As you saw from the test data this guy, I think, met all of its requirements, with the exception of the damping factor was a little bit low, and almost all of the damping factors that I measure on gear is less in the specification, but not always, but that's kind of uh, typical, so it wasn't too far off. And it performed well. It met its power output requirement at 25 watts into 8 ohms at less than 0.3% THD, and its frequency response was as advertised. So technically it worked really well on the bench, it never got hot, and when I did my listening test, I hooked it up to the Wilson Watt 3 Puppy 2 speakers and I terminate the auxiliary inputs and just listen for noise. The gain set for 25 dB at that point, and there was barely any hum or hiss, just a small amount, you walk away a foot from it and you don't hear it. So it's very quiet. The only area that I think the HK430 failed in was in the phono section. And I did not hook up a turntable, but based on the measurements, the frequency response was, was not very good. And it did have some hum in it. So maybe it needs some capacitors in the uh, power supply area of the phono section replaced. But I didn't hook up a turntable and listen to it, but that would be my guess if I had done that. I did listen to the FM and AM tuners and they worked well and there was no issues with them whatsoever. For my listening, I listened to the typical tracks I listened to. It did just fine. I liked the contour control on to boost up the bass and I just thought it did a nice job. I got a little uh, bass going into the chair that I listened to when I was only in the low 80 dB SPLs and I got up to a little bit over 90 dB SPL and it was plenty loud. My wife had to leave the house. She got upset at me. <laughs> That's another story. So it, it sounded really good. It doesn't lack anything. It's a nice looking vintage receiver. I did a quick check on eBay and they sell for maybe $300 uh, working uh, units. So if you don't need a ton of power you know, 25 watts into 8 ohms if that's going to be enough for you. And it should be for a lot of people. It's a nice looking receiver. It doesn't have pre-out uh, main in jacks. That's probably the only uh, negative. Well, it only has one auxiliary input, but that's pretty standard. So for the most part, it's a nice, great vintage receiver, and it was uh, fine to listen to. So that's kind of my take on this 430 twin-powered receiver. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up, and i like to hear your comments as well, so please leave them. And a biggie, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so, uh, so the channel can grow. So, once again, until next time, have a great day or night.